a bustling shopping centre in Bondi Junction, a suburb of Sydney, Australia. It's a typical day filled with the humdrum of life. Picture a day like any other in the heart of Bondi Junction. The shopping centre is buzzing with activity, a rhythmic symphony of life in motion. Shoppers meander from store to store, their arms laden with bags, their faces a blend of exhaustion and satisfaction. The scent of fresh coffee wafts through the air, mingling with the sound of laughter and the occasional toddler's tantrum. It's midday. The sun is shining brightly overhead, casting long shadows that dance on the tiled floor of the shopping centre. The food court is alive with the clatter of cutlery and the murmur of conversation. As families and friends gather to share a meal, a moment, a memory. Elsewhere, a mother coaxes her child into trying on a new pair of shoes. A young couple gazes longingly at the window display of a jewellery store. An old man takes a breather on a bench, watching the world go by. It's a scene of everyday normalcy, of life unfolding in its most mundane and beautiful ways. But as the clock ticks on, the atmosphere begins to shift subtly. There's a ripple in the air, a sense of unease that's hard to place. The laughter sounds a bit hollow, the conversation's a bit strained. It's as if the shopping center itself is holding its breath, bracing for something. And then it happens. An unexpected event that will shatter the normalcy of the day, leaving a mark that will forever be etched in the minds of those present. A shadow falls over Bondi Junction, a chill that seeps into the bones of the unsuspecting shoppers. But little did these unsuspecting shoppers know their day was about to take a horrifying turn. Suddenly the calmness of the day is shattered by a man on a mission of destruction. Enter Joel Couchy, a 40-year-old man from Queensland, his appearance unremarkable. A man who could blend into any crowd, yet today he stands out in the most horrid way possible. His demeanour is a stark contrast to his appearance. There's an unsettling intensity in his eyes. His movements, albeit erratic, seem to follow a sinister pattern. He's not there for a casual day of shopping. He's there to sow the seeds of terror, and he does so with alarming efficiency. With a swift, fluid motion, he brandishes a knife. The once bustling shopping center freezes in a moment of shared disbelief, a silent gasp echoing through the corridors. But the silence is short-lived. Panic ensues as the reality of the situation sets in. Shoppers scatter, their joyful chatter replaced by screams of fear and confusion. The shopping centre, a symbol of everyday normality, is suddenly transformed into a battlefield. Couchy moves with a chilling determination. Each strike, each thrust of his weapon brings with it a new wave of horror. The victims, innocent bystanders caught in his destructive path, fall one after another. Five women and one man, their lives brutally cut short in an unfathomable act of violence. Meanwhile, the alarm has been raised. The police arrive swiftly, their sirens piercing through the cacophony of chaos. A single officer confronts Couchy, his gun trained on the assailant. A tense standoff ensues, but it's short-lived. A gunshot rings out, silencing the chaos momentarily. Couchy, the architect of this tragedy, falls, his reign of terror brought to a sudden, abrupt end. Within minutes, the shopping centre was a scene of chaos and despair. The echoes of the tragedy reverberate through the now silent halls, a stark reminder of the fragility of peace and the unpredictable nature of violence. Among the throng of shoppers were the victims, six individuals whose lives were abruptly ended. Each one was unique, a vibrant thread in the rich tapestry of life, their stories woven with dreams and aspirations, love and laughter. There was Jessica, a young woman in her early twenties, a passionate environmentalist with dreams of making a difference. Then there was Tom, a grandfather of three who had just retired and was looking forward to spending more time with his family. Millie, a young mother with a heart full of love for her two-year-old son, James, a student with a promising future in medical research. Sarah, a talented artist whose work was just beginning to gain recognition. And finally, there was Emily, 
a volunteer at a local animal shelter who found joy in every small act of kindness. Each one of them had dreams, ambitions and people who loved them. They were more than just victims, they were individuals full of life and potential. Their lives, full of potential and dreams, were cut short in the most brutal manner. But who was Joel Couchy, the man behind this atrocious act? Joel Couchy, a 40-year-old Queenslander, was the man who single-handedly turned an ordinary day at Bondi Junction Shopping Center into a nightmare that will forever be etched in the minds of many. But what do we know about him? Couchy was known to lead an itinerant lifestyle. Unemployed and drifting, he recently relocated from Queensland to New South Wales. His lack of steady employment and constant moving painted a picture of a man searching for something, perhaps a sense of stability or purpose that seemed perennially out of his reach. But it wasn't just his lifestyle that raised eyebrows. Couchy had a history of mental health decline, a battle he fought privately and publicly. His interactions with law enforcement were often tied to his mental health crises. He was a man on their radar, yet no one could predict the scale of the tragedy he would ultimately cause. Despite his struggles, Couchy had interests like any other individual. Surfing, social activities and astronomy were some of the passions that filled his social media pages. A glimpse into his world showed a man fascinated by the cosmos, perhaps seeking solace in the vastness of the universe. These interests, his posts and interactions, are now under the microscope as police try to piece together the puzzle of his motive. The digital footprint he left behind is a labyrinth of complexities and contradictions, as is often the case with individuals battling mental health issues. Yet these facets of his life don't justify or excuse his actions. They are mere fragments of a larger picture, a picture of a man whose life was marred by mental health issues and who chose to inflict his inner turmoil onto innocent lives. A man battling demons of his own, his actions resulted in an unimaginable tragedy. The aftermath of the incident was a scene of shock, grief and a desperate search for answers. A devastating silence fell over the Bondi Junction shopping center, the echoes of the tragedy still palpable in the air. The immediate response was swift and thorough, with law enforcement and emergency services launching into action. The investigation process was meticulous, each detail scrutinized in an attempt to piece together the puzzle of the horrifying event. The focus quickly turned to Joel Couchy, the man responsible for the mass stabbing. Investigators delved into his past, his interactions with law enforcement and his struggle with mental health. They examined his itinerant lifestyle, his unemployment and his interests in surfing, social activities and astronomy. His digital footprint, especially his activity on social media, became a crucial part of the probe. Public response was an amalgamation of disbelief, outrage and deep sorrow. The city of Bondi Junction and indeed all of Australia mourned the loss of six innocent lives. Candlelight vigils were held and memorials sprung up, a testament to the resilience and unity of the community in the face of such a shocking tragedy. The final act of justice was swift. Couchy was shot dead by a police officer, ending the reign of terror that had paralyzed the shopping center. But this act of justice wasn't a cause for celebration. Instead, it was a sobering reminder of the lives lost and the mental health issues that often go unnoticed or untreated until it's too late. In the end, justice was served, but the scars of that day remain. The Bondi Junction mass stabbing will forever be etched into the collective memory, a chilling reminder of the fragility of life and the urgent need for comprehensive mental health support. The legacy of this tragedy is a call to action, a plea for understanding and a commitment to ensure that such a horrifying event never happens again.
In the wake of such a horrifying event, we pause to remember the victims. These were lives brimming with potential, abruptly extinguished. They were sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, friends and neighbours. Each one of them harboured dreams, passions and aspirations that were as diverse as they were. Perhaps one was a budding artist, another a devoted teacher. A third might have been an avid surfer, while yet another, a stargazer who found solace in the night sky. Their lives were interwoven with ours, leaving indelible imprints on our hearts. They were part of our community, our world, and their absence creates a void that can never be filled. We extend our deepest condolences to their families, friends and loved ones. We stand with them in their grief sharing in their loss. They were individuals full of life, dreams and hopes, taken too soon from this world. May their souls rest in peace.